here. So we have to back up. There goes that one. Hello and welcome to the Retro Detroit Nerd Fighters podcast. My name is Ian the Well Informed. I'm here with Phil the Phil Badger and welcome back, Kathy the CSA. <laughs> Woohoo! Yay! Thank you. It's good to be back. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so what do we want to start with uh, first? Do we want to um, uh, start off with um, something you've never used, Kathy, something called Google Assistant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. I have no input on that. You know, you know my history. You know my track record. Yeah. Um, so the other day, I, um, I, I'm good at like paying off my bills and things like that. And so I, um, me personally, I uh, get this notification from Google Assistant that says um, your bill for your car is due on uh, August something. And so I was like, I paid my car bill. <laughs> I'm like, how does Google know that I um, uh, have a bill? <laughs> I'm like, that must be something in like the uh, user agreement that I never, uh, um, never read. So <laughs> you'll find all kinds of wild stuff in those user agreements. Yeah. There have been a couple that have had like cash prizes if you send in something and, uh, you know, send something to a particular address that's buried deep in the user agreement. And I think some of those, you know, only paid a limited number. And I think some of those cash prizes are still outstanding. Uh, do you mean that they're really good or that they haven't still been claimed? Nobody reads them. <laughs> that's what the problem is. Because yes. they're so long and they're so long and unwieldy and and uh, written in languages no one understands, except All a right. lawyer. Uh, for a minute there, I was going to say you needed a little bit of phrasing, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> um, That's why I hate using that stuff because I feel like I have to read it and I can't read it. And too many times I hear people say, "Oh, just agree." just agree, just agree to everything. And they do, they, they just gather all your information and use it against us a lot of times, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we haven't said it on this show, but it is true that um, like Google um, does um, consistently try to, um, uh, gather data from users. <laughs> and even if it cool. is, even if the person has switched it off. <laughs> so. It's definitely not for our benefit that they're doing that. It's definitely for their own benefit. And you've, I've, you know, I don't by any means claim to be an expert in this field. You guys know that. But just from what I've um, seen with that whole Cambridge Analytica thing where they actually influenced elections in other countries just by playing to people's weaknesses and egos and trying to peer pressure them into voting or not voting or, or how they do things. They definitely have way too much power with the seemingly innocent information that they collect on people. Yeah. It's <laughs> but on the other hand, now you know what kind of pickle you are. Um, I, I don't know what that means. That must have been a well, server. That, that was how Cambridge Analytica harvested this user data by all these uh, silly little tests that they, tell you what kind of pickle you are, or which friend's character you are, or... Which Sex in the City girl you are, which... Exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think I've ever done one of those. I don't think I've ever... It's more of a Facebook thing. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> That's why I haven't done one of those things. It's still one of the non-Facebook members out there. I'm 
I'm They'll happy get you. for you. Not They'll yet. Get you. They haven't got me yet, Phil. I'm getting pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much time left. If they're You'll going join to... the hive mind at some point. Hmm. Be strong. Be strong. <laughs> it's all good. Um, but uh, let's see. Um, should we talk about this? Um, yeah, you know, let's um, kind of switch it off. I keep Phil seeing a whole lot more clones of Hero Wars. <laughs> Why? Um, apparently, it's a model that sells. So I guess everyone wants to dilute the market. So I forget what, what is Hero Wars? Uh, Hero Wars is that game that it shows um, you trying to uh, a, a hero trying to figure out a puzzle and then um, not being successful but then if you do click on are the these, link are these, it's are these... not the same game entirely and are these puzzles that look like a four-year-old could solve them? And you, yeah. can't, and you can't imagine why this person is fa failing at this so much? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's how they get you. Yeah, it's just... Um, apparently, uh, apparently, bait and switch works. Hero Wars? I know, right? Yeah, it's a mobile <laughs> it's a mobile game. Okay. Okay. So you have to download the game to play it? It's not like it's, you, uh, it's another you down, Facebook well, game. <laughs> yeah, and it, you might see it in ads all the time. Both on Facebook and on mobile on mobile games that are you know free to download and are supported by advertising. So I have seen it on YouTube as an advertisement. Oh. oh, that's a new one. I haven't seen that. It's like here. But works. then I bought I bought YouTube Premium two months ago, so I wouldn't have to sit through um, election ads until till November. Uh, my only question to you is, what's on YouTube Premium? <laughs> I mean, I mean, Cobra Kai has moved to um, Netflix, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't buy YouTube Premium to get access to any particular shows. Um, I just bought it so I wouldn't have to sit through endless, um, you know, pro-Trump, pro-Biden ads, you know, that are just nasty to sit through. When you made your decision months ago about who you're going to vote for. They are hard to watch. They're brutal. They are hard to watch, those ads. It's, I'm ready for them to be over as well. But I, I don't know anything about YouTube Premium. <laughs> I think the last time I watched YouTube was something that you guys asked me to watch like a year ago or something. Wasn't there a, some um, conversation we had? I mean, I would ask you expect you to me to remember things that happened a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> I would ask you to. That um, was that was like that was like a decade ago in in COVID time. <laughs> It was pre-COVID. Oh my God. Remember that? Remember pre-COVID? Wow. It feels like feels like it was 10 years ago. It very much um no. I mean like for me, I'm just keep working and working in school. It's unfortunately not slow for me. It's very, very fast right now. <laughs> But I understand that if you're like in the house all day, yeah, I totally understand. <laughs> you work it's from just... home now, right, um, Phil? Sure you... do. Yeah, we work for the same company, except I go in every day. <laughs> and I have steadily through this whole thing. There's been no, there's been no break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know what, it, I don't know that it's, 
how you guys are doing staying home every day. I know my husband was home for a couple of months and uh, I think he's glad just to be doing it one day at a time. Yeah, but, could you have kids and stuff at home too. Oh, right? oh yeah. And he like he likes to hang out with me when I'm well, working. Well, yeah. <laughs> he's not old. It's, how old is he old enough to go to school this year? Are you in that whole? Yeah, yeah, he's ready. To, he's old enough to go to kindergarten this year, and we're still trying to figure all that out. Man, I am so grateful that my kids are out of the K through 12 system right now. That has got to be um, quite a burden to deal with and make a decision. I know what it was like making decisions when my kids were little, just uh, you know how it was going to affect their life on a daily basis, but nothing to this extent that I have to deal with. So. I feel for you and your wife, Phil. Yeah, we're making do, so we'll figure it out because we have to, so. Right, right. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear your, um, I feel good with your answer. You, you don't seem overwhelmed with it, so good. Because I don't have a lot of, um, you know, experience with the people who are dealing with that right now. Mm -hmm. so I'm glad to hear some, you know, level-headedness with the whole conversation. But I, I, I digress. Go ahead, back to whatever it was that you were talking about, Ian. Uh, <laughs> I, think start, I think we started by talking about YouTube Premium. Oh, that was way I mean, out. the only thing I can add to children and this conversation is at work, people are saying I have really good dad jokes oh. and it hurts because I'm not a father so, <laughs> so. <laughs> you know what you do? but you're but you're ready you're ready with the jokes when that day comes I don't know when that'll happen <laughs> but, thank but dad you. <laughs> jokes never go old never grow old that's the point they're actually cool right now aren't they <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it's like two or three Twitter feeds that I follow that are dedicated to dad jokes. <laughs> That's a good description of your jokes, though, Ian. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, <laughs> um, so, I forgot what I was going to say because I'm trying to do two things at once right now. So, <laughs> but um, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm ready for when that day comes, but it just hurts that it's not now, but <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Glad it's not right now. No, I, 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 I yeah. yeah, happy it's not now. It's just. Uh, someday, hopefully. Um, <laughs> um, so what else? Um, let's see. Um, there really isn't a good transition for this. Um, Phil, do you have any uh, dad jokes? Because I've got none right now. <laughs> Not off the top of my head. Um... I mean that's that is where I keep my hair, not my jokes. So. <laughs> <That'll do. laughs> um, so, I guess maybe we switch it up to um, YouTube and talk about some idiot named Jake Paul. <laughs> I saw that headline. Fill me in on that. I saw they raided his house or something, but I have no clue who he is or why they did that. Uh, Jake Paul is one of the, I would say, one of the top 20 YouTubers on, in terms of subscribers and base, things like that. But he does really, like, should I say, borderline illegal stuff. And so the FBI was he the one was was he the one that went to the cemetery and 
or that for the suicide forest in Japan and made a really lot of tasteless jokes, or was that Logan? That's 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 Is Logan. That Logan Paul. That's okay. Logan. Before that, you uh, Jake Paul, Paul is his brother. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. How many billions of people put stuff out on YouTube, and this guy's like the top twenty out of billions? Is there billions? I don't know. Millions. <laughs> Millions? Millions. They don't have YouTube in China? Do they? Yeah, they do. Oh. It's probably heavily censored. Oh, yeah. censored. And now, that, now that we've said that, this podcast won't go up in China, but... Oh, darn it. Darn it. Sorry, just delete that uh, comment. No, in your Phil. <laughs> no, Phil. Um, we're... We're pretty fine in China. Um, okay. I mean, I the only thing that we have to worry about China is I. After this podcast, I need to go do my dishes. So. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> nice. So. All right. Go ahead. So he's not the forest guy. He's not the forest guy. Um, Jake. Um, yeah, Jake. Paul can't see the forest from the trees. But. <laughs> can't see the forest from his brother. Yeah. Uh, so what do you do? But Dick Paul is the um, older brother. It's where a lot of was he the one? Was he the one who was trying to be from? Hmm? Was Jake Paul the one who was trying to be an MMA fighter for a while, or was that Logan and Paul as well? well? Both of them have pursued to be. An, MMA fighters. Logan Paul has actually kind of um, been um, a bit successful on that. He's trying. He has. Um, um, he is uh, not um, within MMA. He has fought a guy named KSI. <laughs> so he has. Um, Logan Paul has fought before, so. Okay. I seem to remember one of them got beat really bad and all the pictures, all the bloody pictures wound up on the internet and everyone tried to dunk on him. Well, that is deserved, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, let's, let's get back to, uh, to Jake Paul. Because I I've decided I'm probably not ever going to figure out which one he is. So what did he do? That uh, he got killed for. I'm not entirely sure, but his house had been raided by FBI officials, and probably, as we speak, we'll probably find out the details soon as to why. <laughs> But then right now it's just all rumors and speculation. Yeah, it's it's um, disrespectful until we find some answers. <laughs> hmm. All right, you're supposed to fill me in on that stuff, but it's still a mystery. That's pretty amazing because I feel like that was like we need to get the we need to get the Scooby Doo gang on this. <sighs> Oh, and you just mentioned the <laughs> you mentioned the one thing, hey, the one topic I forgot to put on the list that I um now rem <laughs> now remember. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, um, in an interview, the creators of uh, Scooby Two have named um, Velma is lesbian. Oh, come on. <laughs> They're just confirming this now? Yes. <laughs> You've seen the way she looks at Daphne. Oh, come on. You can't make that up 30 years later, like, oh, a character. <laughs> Who cares if she is or she isn't? But first of all, I was a <laughs> character. Have a sexual orientation. All right. Well, you knew that Daphne and what's that blonde-haired guy? Well, you knew they were a, a couple. But really, now you're just gonna pretend that Thelma was a lesbian. Okay, whatever. 
I don't know what to say to it. I've always thought. <laughs> you always thought she was? Who even ever thought of that? I, that had never entered my mind whether she was or wasn't. Are you guys serious? That must be a guy thing. Do you guys just think that about every female? Do you wonder? Okay, Ian's like, no, no, I swear. <laughs> oh, I watch streamers who are better off lesbian. I don't think um, <laughs> that, <laughs> I'm joking, that are lesbian. And it's, um, I don't know <laughs> what to add more to it other than, um, <sighs> put myself in an awkward situation, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Um, Blows my no, like, I just did I, that to, to be relevant right now or, or whatever. You can't go back and say a character. You can't, What do you guys think? You can't go back and say a cartoon character. Well, I mean, is this, is, you know, has she been this way from the time the character was, con you know, conceived back in the late 1960s? What? Or is this more of the more recent interpretations of Velma? What way? Because she wore big sweaters and she wasn't like, a, it was it's like Ginger and Marianne. <laughs> she wasn't Daphne. She was, it was Marianne. Now are they going to come out and say she was a lesbian now? Because <laughs> she wasn't overtly... Feminine? Okay, that's bizarre. I'm done. You guys talk about that. <laughs> I'm done before. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't really know what to say on it either, but I guess good for Velma. Get, be, <laughs> show the world your, your true self. I want to say I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sexist, but that I don't know how to um, it's up for interpretation. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's a cartoon uh, character. You could say that about any cartoon character if you wanted to at this point. Yeah. It, okay. I, I, I don't... <laughs> go ahead. Uh, it's, it's Do you want to change subjects, Ian? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if we have any more, I think we're. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. It's a good time to change the uh, subject. Um, um, so, Phil. Um, yes. Have you seen the videos with Jim Sterling and Ubisoft? I did not watch that that particular one. I've been off. I haven't been off following Jim Sterling for a couple of weeks, but I I saw the video went up. So not really, not really sure what this new one's about. Do you want to fill us in? Um. Yeah, a little bit. Um, there's been a lot of um, what's it called? He really hmm. you know he tore into he apparently tore into Ubisoft again that's about all I figured um there's a I guess this is homework but um he tore into Ubisoft because he has friends that work there and his friends and other people who have come forward have um there have been a lot of allegations of people getting hurt there like not like um in a specific oh, manner oh okay a lot of harass harassment stories coming out of ubisoft i think I think I have heard about some of those. 
usually don't dive into the details on those kind of stories because I figure the headline makes makes me upset that that's happening. What do I what do I get from reading the article and getting more upset? Yeah, it's just Jim is um, Jim Sterling is taking it on a level of he. Um, I'm finding him to be um, a bit more nihilistic than usual, more of he wants to um, 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 like hurt Ubisoft because of what others have done to people there. But it's more a matter of at least in my opinion, I've he, I've always been <laughs> of a mindset of if there's a company that is, say, corrupt or uh, things of that nature, that you need to um, um, remove the a um, 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 work from within to get them removed or at least change their behavior. <laughs> That's always been my opinion and not to, it's a company. Um, if we have to dismantle the company, so be it, but we want to do our best not to. <laughs> That's always been um, my POV on it. I don't know the whole mm -hmm. story, obviously, or anything to do with it, but I'm with you, Ian. If there's a problem, you don't want to put everybody out on the street in the company. I don't know what this guy's doing or anything, but I have to agree with you on that. If there's a problem, try to remove the problem and, and hopefully not have everyone. Don't, don't burn it all to the ground. Yeah. Don't burn the whole house down just to get a couple of spiders. Yeah, leave the spiders alone anyways. They're not hurting anybody. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, that was no. That was, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I obviously don't know the situation though on what's what's going on there. I'm with Phil too. I I might have seen a headline on something on that as well, but I I really don't know any any more than that. I mean, I'll yeah, I'll send it to both of you for maybe next time or just for entertainment purposes. Well, uh, <laughs> entertainment purposes. Call that it. If you call that entertainment. I was just thinking the same thing, Phil. <laughs> it's called sarcasm. <laughs> we'll get to it list. Yeah, go ahead and send it. We'll get to it. Yeah. About a year or two later. Yeah. <laughs> once we once we figure out how to separate, uh, once we how to learn, tell the difference between uh, Jake and Logan Paul. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, according to an article I found from the BBC just now, um, the FBI was seen uh, removing guns from his property. So. Oh. And he's under apparently under suspicion for um, one, I guess, doing some looting um, in Arizona and uh, holding a big, uh, big house party under, you know, oh, I... in, in violation of, uh, of uh, large gatherings in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, but it, and we didn't cover it last time. Yeah, there was a um, house party hosted by Jake Paul. So I kind of didn't want to cover it but <laughs> because I wanted to find out whether or not um, um, if cases spiked or not. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. But, yeah, but the FBI has to be there because of the, the looting and the guns in Arizona. 
Yeah, and and good mm. for them on that. They oh my gosh, that's a whole episode if you want to talk to, about these people just opportunistically destroying and and robbing places and destruction and oh my gosh, so good for them on on that. I don't think it was because of the house party, although I think that that was obviously that was something else that happened. Yeah, I think it's more relation to the guns and such too so yeah good for them they oh i don't get me started on that don't get me started you better move on <laughs> i wasn't going to you're gonna run out of time with me talking about these crazy people uh, i won't yeah. be there i'm just off in a trance right now um <laughs> Well, good work on finding out and which one it was and what he did, Phil. <laughs> now I know for sure which one it was. No. So, from what I understand... Still, still can't oh. tell the two of them apart. Uh, anyway. From what I understand, this is how you tell them apart. Um, one of them is part of a band called Less Than Jake. And the other one is in a movie called Logan's Run. No. God. No. Well, you know I would tell them apart. One is in FBI custody. <laughs> and the other is not, I would imagine, at this point in time. Yes. Which one of these just doesn't belong? Okay. <laughs> uh, but no, speaking of people that don't belong, um, or just flat out goofy. Uh, Phil, uh, oh. did you, um, I'm not saying, you saying I don't belong. Asking you, um, <laughs> to be honest, um, <laughs> Phil, have you, um, have you heard about the um, Dan Habiki coming to Street Fighter V? No, I have not. Well, <laughs> are you a, uh, are you a Street Fighter fan? Mm, can't say that I am. I've played a round or two, but no, I threw my allegiance to Mortal Kombat back in the 90s, and I stand by my choice. Okay. <laughs> I got you. Um, I, I, I've wanted to get back into Mortal Kombat and things like that, but for right now, like, um, one of um, one of my favorite characters from the Street Fighter franchise is coming back to Street Fighter V. Um, his name is Dan Hibiki in the game, and he is supposed to be like the goofy character, the character that wasn't meant to be a fighter, but still is. <laughs> um, he's the one with the, um, like the orange t-shirt. Not like the one I'm wearing, which is red, but uh, <laughs> but he's supposed to. He was trained by the martial artist that trained uh, Ryu and Ken, but then he got kicked out because he didn't show enough potential. <laughs> and and yet so, somehow he made it into the Street Fighter tournament. <laughs> but then he would always because he's the joke character he would he would qualify but he would he um no <sighs> he's not a good fighter <laughs> he, and yet um, you and you but you've uh, figured out how to make them work you figured I, out how to play with them score a hit or two uh, when Street Fighter Ultra Street Fighter 4 was out, I mained as him, and I um, he has some things that make him unique, which is um, um, he's one of the fastest characters, even though his attacks are about they cover maybe um he doesn't have much range, <laughs> but he's uh -huh. fast. So, 
So it's all a matter of knowing how to use them. But <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm excited for that, and may buy Street Fighter Five for PC, maybe <laughs> because of him. But mm-hmm. want to see his backstory. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. See if it's as dark and gritty as you remember. Yeah. Hey, no, his story's never dark and gritty. Um, um, Maybe it should be. <laughs> no, his um, he's sort of an idiot. Um, he um, in Street Fighter Four when you win against uh, when you win with him. Um, He's opened. He's opened up this dojo, and so he put out this ad for his dojo and forgot to put the address on there so that people could come. <laughs> that type of stuff. See, no, like, I I would see an ad like that, and I would think think of the Men in Black, where you need to show you need to. Sh- if you're good enough to be in the men in black, you're able to find their headquarters without, without them giving you the address. <laughs> that must mean it's a real super great dojo then. <laughs> That's up for interpretation. <laughs> I like my interpretation better because it makes them seem like a more, a smarter character. <laughs> And really, a really more, he's got a diabolical side that really never comes out that he hides with a joking manner. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is why, this is, this, this is why Loki was a trick, why Loki was the most dangerous because he was always a trickster and no one ever took him seriously. Until it was too late. And Ragnarok was underway. That's... I'll say this, that is one way of interpreting it. <laughs> yes. That's going to be the backstory I keep in my head. But, like, reason why, and this is a little bit dark, reason why he wanted to become a fighter was because he, um, his dad um, died, and his father, um, he faced this, um, he faced one of like the elites, one of the strongest of all the fighters. Um, 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 There's this one character who um, within a fight lost his eye and his father faced that guy, (laughs) Mm -hmm. took out his eye basically so because that character feared for his life he killed his father (laughs) unfortunately so then um dan kind of um wanted vengeance for his father even though it's more of a self-defense thing (laughs) right okay so yeah either way a tale as old as time (laughs) Are these real people, or are these just made-up stories to go along with characters? These are both. It, it is made-up characters for, um, you're right, it is that was a pretty, made-up characters. That was a pretty um, in-depth backstory for a made-up character. <laughs> they try to, <laughs> they try to put some depth to the characters within Street Fighter, but it 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 helps uh, players, you know, attach to to a particular character and want to want that character to grow and with them and as they get better at the game. I think it should come out that one of them was homosexual. <laughs> Didn't they already do that? Oh, is this a thing now? Are they all doing it? Yeah, just to have a broader market, but <laughs> just to put them on the spot. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's like Velma. That's well. That's all. <laughs> I know, right? Like Velma is Velma. 
Ow. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, no, um, I, um, hey, we have a few more topics. Um, um, do we want to talk about, um, uh, let me see. Um, we want to talk a little bit about CDC, right? Uh, what did you want to say about the CDC? I mean, just to reflect on what we said last time, um, that, it, that the information is all like projection data. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not meant to be completely accurate. <laughs> um, I agree with you. It, obviously, they're looking forward trying to prevent things and to save as many lives as they can. So you're not basing it on past data, you're basing it on what you think is gonna happen and you're trying to take steps to, to prevent um, as much as possible. So yeah, like, uh, what else I'll, could they do? I'll give a pretty good example. Um, um, I, I know both of you remember this, I probably. Um, you remember um, Obama money? back in 2009. Obama money? Yeah. That feels like it was 300 years ago now. <laughs> I know, right? No, I, um, um, I, well, and I can say this, I worked for a company that received that Obama money. I can't speak a lot to it, but a lot of the, what is, the big issues was there was tens of thousands of people who came to Cobo Hall expecting to um, be helped with their housing. And that's not at all how the program worked. <laughs> um, this grant money that was given forth by federal government was supposed to be used over a three year times, um, over three years time. And people assume, uh, people were led to believe, unfortunately, that it was, um, that they would be able to get that now. But, <laughs> so a lot of people were discouraged because they had to, eh, many of the people who went there had to win line <laughs> for a long time, <laughs> mm -hmm. for months to even years. <laughs> That's a pretty long line. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really familiar with what you termed Obama money, so I don't really have much input to say about that it was it sounds like it was a government program intended have, sounds like it might have been oversold for housing was it improvements or just to keep people in their houses or able to purchase houses or exactly well, this is you're exactly right yeah, 2009 would have been right after the financial collapse of that era right because now I mean now, now we're at a time where we have to distinguish between financial crashes so yeah, that, that's bizarre, isn't it? Like all of a sudden, maybe we just weren't old enough to realize it before, but uh, yeah, I know this is number two in a short, short span. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think I was busy working and raising kids at that time. I didn't pay too much attention to that program. But years, I mean, it doesn't, seemed like they rolled it out. Was it another one of those quick rollouts where they didn't have the stuff in place? No? No, like, um, I won't say who officiated it, but um, um, like the person who has control over it was a governor. I'll say this, it wasn't like Kilpatrick or anyone like that who was governor during that time, but it was um, the governor that was in office um, 
I said governor, the mayor that was uh, there at the time, um, um, thought that it was a great idea to uh, let this money and information go to the public. And um, their intention was good. Their intention was great. But how these programs work is word of mouth <laughs> is the best. Eh? So then you can control who has that information and you can help as many people as you can. And, it's, and I'll bring it back to CDC. Like when you, when giving money out to these companies, you have to do a lot of logistics. You have to know what um, people are going to do based on um, what's happened in the past. <laughs> And um, and know that there are going to be people who are going to manipulate the system. Always, always, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But again, with the CDC, like you're saying, that's all they can do is use past data to try and get the best idea on how to move forward with an unknown. Yeah. So, so the fact that their data is moving to HHS, Health and Human Services, and all this stuff. That bank of information, uh, CDC and um, Health and Human Services are a nightmare right now. <laughs> more than I, um, much more than I am expressing right now. <laughs> But you would understand the logistics of that. I could not even begin to comprehend what that would take. But isn't Health and Human Services the parent company of CDC? I'm not entirely sure. I, I believe um, it is. So I would hope that would help somewhat in the transition of the data. But I, again, I couldn't understand the logistics of transferring that much information and why it would have to be absorbed by HSS, the Health and Human Services, when they are technically the head of the CDC anyway. I don't understand the, the point of, they should have access to whatever information CDC has anyways, unless there's some kind of regulations, of course, I don't understand, not, which is probably the case. <laughs> um, like HHS. Well, some, yeah, some were speculating that there's political motives behind this, you know, changing where the data is going, so. Yeah, yeah, because we don't like, cause, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, cause we, we don't, we don't like the numbers that come out of the CDC, so, you know, right. let's, Let's have HHS, you know, scrub scrub the numbers, if you will. That's that's a speculation that I've seen. Um, yeah. I haven't really dove into it to know how seriously to take that assertion. So that makes sense, though, to me for sure. You got somebody friendly at HHS who is going to put out the information the way you want it to be presented, instead of the CDC, which is maybe not as uh, in line with what you want to say. Yeah, that makes a whole. That, that was that was the speculation that I've seen. So, I think yeah. what's making Ian crazy is the thought of transferring all that data. <laughs> I mean, working at GM, I there are certain reports that take a full week to run. <laughs> Hold on. Um, Bless you. Thanks. Um, yeah. yeah, there are reports that take like a whole week to run, and so, and so I can't I mean, with GM having millions and then CDC having billions um, people who have passed, people who are still alive, things along those lines. There's a lot of information there. There's potentially 
billions of records of information there. <laughs> what a waste of time, effort, and money to do that just because you don't like the way you feel it's unflattering the way data is coming out. So you want to hand it over to someone who's going to present it better for you when you can't get together on a, you know, a stimulus package to keep people in their houses to have them being evicted, but you're going to waste all this time, money, energy, and personnel on transferring over what you said would amount to trillions of amounts of data because you want to appear better when information comes well, out. Well, yeah, but he's got he's got an election to win, Kathy. So yeah, right. Oh <laughs> gosh, oh jeez. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's the most important thing right now, isn't it? And you think that's going to do it? And, and and then, can do it. You know what I have to I, say? I don't. I don't think. I don't think folks are buying that. This is what I have to say. You're a great worker. You've done a great job for me, but I hate to say it. You're fired. Do you know what that was from? <laughs> Do you know what that was from? Um, the Apprentice. <laughs> yeah, I know. All I, all I have to say on it is, and I agree with you. Uh, <laughs> I agree with you. Um, the data never lies. <laughs> but it can be manipulated. It can be manipulated, yes. But the yeah. data, the raw data, doesn't lie. <laughs> I'm with you. No, it can. It can. Data can lie if it's incomplete. If yeah. It's not, if it's not right, if it's not good data, right. If it's not good solid data. You're right. It can mislead. Hey, there's data, and then there's quality data. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. QD. We're calling it from now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess, um, uh, Phil, have you ever seen the movie Idiocracy? Uh, not lately. I mean, I can just watch it now by watching the news, so. <laughs> have you seen the movie <laughs> Idiocracy? Uh, I think you. I watched it back in uh, 2007. It's been a while. Yeah, I mean, I mean, who, um, um, for that, um, I don't know how to transition to it, but what do you think of Brondo? <laughs> I know it's a plants crave. It's what plants crave, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, do you believe that, um, that movie is really a documentary. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. A lot of it is pretty relevant already. A lot <laughs> of it is, it's, it's come true. It has come true. You didn't even need 500 more years for that to happen. A lot of it is, does seem to exist at right now. It's unfortunate. <laughs> Or I, I don't, um, I, how should I say this? I want to see people smarter. It's just not happening right now. <laughs> just on the outside looking in. Or in the inside of my house, looking out to other people within their houses, not spying on them, seeing the idiocracy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you know, I'm going back, I'm going to go back to Men in Black one more time here. Um, I think Tommy Lee Jones said it well when he said, a person is smart, but people are dumb. Because, you know, when you have a collective, you know, it's the loudest voices that tend to rule. And sometimes those loudest voices don't tend to be the least informed. You yeah. know, whether they're consumed by magical thinking, you know, a subversive agenda or what have you. Um, 
you know, it's it's just those, you know, the the things that can be explained without nuance, you know, tends to be what people as a collective will grasp onto because nuance is hard. <laughs> right. Right. I'm amazed at what people say and actually believe a lot of times these days. Like they read something or, oh, well, I saw it in a, in a picture. Well, my gosh, you could manipulate any picture just like you could manipulate data. Like, it's amazing to me. And I, and I think, and I think a lot of times folks, you know, they fall for this stuff. They think they've, they've stumbled across some super secret hidden agenda, you mm -hmm. know, that, you know, conform, you know, in comfort, you know, sometimes confirmation bias takes over and, you know, it becomes, well, I want it to be true. So it is now. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> sometimes, um, sometimes someone just doesn't know any better. Yeah. And, and sometimes think, people start um, believing the stuff because it lets them be in a super secret club. Mm -hmm. I got you. Um, but yeah, I think we have to wrap up. It's, uh, I'm sorry, we need to do this again. Um, uh, Phil, where can we find you? Uh, hiding out in my basement again. <laughs> I'm, not going, I'm not going anywhere. Yes. Still working uh, from home, working remote. Yeah, and you can find me at inform.com, inform with an A. Kathy, you are here. <laughs> in the moment, that's where you can find me, in the moment. Yes, in the moment. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yes, all right, thank you. Um, um, Make the world suck less, please. We need wear it. a mask. <laughs> wear a mask. Wear a mask. Good. All right. It's good talking to you guys today. You too. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.